In this video, we're going to use the ideal gas law to solve a problem involving calculating the number of moles of a compound and then doing something like calculating the percent of oxygen in another compound. Okay, so let's take a look. So this is lecture problem two, and we're just going to be doing the first one at this point. So it says the decomposition of reaction for potassium chlorate is KClO3 goes to KCl plus 3O2. So it says to calculate how many grams of O2 were produced if the gas occupies a volume of 1.23 liters at a pressure of, a pressure of 750.2 torr and a temperature of 21 degrees Celsius. Now the reason why we're calculating the grams of O2 is because you'll see calculate the percent of, percent of oxygen in KClO3 if the initial sample weighed 2.052 grams. So to solve the second part of the problem, if we want to get percent of oxygen in KClO3, this is going to need, we're going to need the mass of O2, or the mass of oxygen, same thing, divided by the mass of the KClO3 times 100. So you can see how this problem is kind of setting you up to get to that stepwise. Okay, so now how do we deal with the ideal gas law in terms of solving problems? So we know that the ideal gas law is PV equals nRT. So generally speaking, when you get one of these ideal gas law problems, you're going to be given um, three out of the four variables, and then you're going to calculate the fourth. So how's the best way to set this up? The first thing you have to do is you have to identify what they want you to solve. So in this case, it says how many grams of O2? Well, we can't get grams of O2 from the ideal gas law. We can only get moles. So in this case, we're going to be going from moles of O2 to mass of O2, and we'll eventually need to use the molecular weight for that. But if we can get to the moles of O2, that's moving us in the right direction. So now let's set up the variable chart. And the variable chart is where you take the information from the problem and you set it up for each one of the various um, variables that are in PV equals nRT. And then you use this chart to get you to the ideal, to get you through the correct units for the ideal gas law. So we have a volume of 1.23 liters. We can leave that as is. That's in the correct um, units. We have a pressure of 750.2 torr. So immediately I'm going to get this into ATM by dividing this by 760 torr for one atmosphere. And from that I'm going to get 0 0.98711 ATM. The number of moles is what we're looking for. And the temperature in this case is 21 degrees Celsius, and I'm going to immediately get that into Kelvin by adding 273.15. So in this case, that's going to give us 294.15. Now, the next step is to get the ideal gas law in a form where we have all of the other variables on one side and what we want on the, on the other. So in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to divide both sides by RT, this is going to give me N is equal to PV over RT. Now, the reason why I do this is because this allows you to do your algebra up front, and then you plug the numbers in. I often find that what happens when, when students try to do the algebra after they've plugged the numbers in, that's when they tend to make mistakes. In this case, you just plug the numbers in, and then you immediately put it in your calculator, and that leads to, the, that leads to fewer mistakes than trying to do it the other way around. So N is equal to PV over RT. We're going to plug our variables in. Our pressure is 0 0.98711 ATM. And I'm just for sig fig purposes, I put the line under the 1. Um, my volume is 1.23 liters. My gas constant is 0 0.0821 liters atmospheres per mole Kelvin. It's very important that you put in the proper units there because you want to make sure that all the other units are going to cancel. And then my temperature is 294.15 Kelvin. And we'll put a little line under the 4 for sig figs. So when you do that calculation, uh, when you multiply 0 0.98711 times 1.23, push the divide button by 0 0.0821, push the divide button by 294.15, you should get 0 0.0502 two seven moles of O2. And um, the last step now is to get to grams. So if we take our moles, and I'm just going to bring that up here so that I have a little bit more room. If we take our 0 0.05027 moles of O2 
and we know that the O2 molecule weighs 32 grams for every one mole. Don't forget that. It's not 16 because with O2, it's two oxygen, so we double it. And so when you do that, you get 1.609 grams. So that's our mass of oxygen. So now down here, we can start to plug things in. So if the mass of the KClO3 was 2.052 grams, the mass of oxygen, 1.609 grams, gets 78.4% oxygen. If some of you guys are wondering, Dr. K, it's asking us for the percent of oxygen in KClO3, not the percent of O2 in KClO3. What you have to remember is it doesn't really make a difference because of conservation of mass. So all of the oxygen that's in here must come from, oh, I'm sorry, all of the oxygen that's a product must have come from the O3 that's in there. So if we can figure out how much of this O2 gas we have around, all of that O2 gas came from that initial oxygen in the KClO3. That's how this works through conservation of mass. So that's why I can put in 1.609 grams of O2 because that, is, that represents all the oxygen that we collected that came from that sample.